Now normally I don't like being woken up at 7am on a Sunday morning, but this is not a normal day. Today I'm going to the Last Alliance, the biggest one day singles event in GBHL history, and I'm ready to embarrass myself on a scale not yet seen. Now this was only my second official tournament, but after all of the practice games, the friendly competition, and being able to talk models and armies and rules with all my friends, I felt changed. I felt like the nervous wreck of a man that turned up to that first tournament there was gone. I felt like a new man this morning. I started the day off right, a McDonald's breakfast and a staring competition with possibly the creepiest chair I've ever seen in my life. If you couldn't tell, I hadn't quite woken up yet. So Last Alliance was 4 games at 550 points. With a bit of a twist, you brought 470 points of your own army, as well as 80 points of mercenaries, and those mercenaries would be randomly assigned to another player. Uh, the full rules are on the screen so you can have a look and understand them slightly better. The scenarios for the day were Lords of Battle, Heirlooms of Ages Past, a slightly modified version of Heirlooms where all six Heirlooms are in play, Destroy the Supplies and Fog of War. Heirlooms had been drawn as the first game and the rest would be drawn as the day went on. And of course, no one would make any mistakes with these, would they? Sometimes foreshadowing is relatively obvious. I decided to take Rohan, which was a new army for me, although at this stage in the hobby I think all armies are new armies for me, um, and considering this is only my second tournament, I have now played two different armies, so yeah, steep learning curve, I had played some practice games with them, they were led by Thaden, uh, along with Aemir and Dernhelm, and they were all mounted, so I was going to have problems straight away with heirlooms, because part of the rules for this one was he had to dig and you cannot dig when you're on a horse. I drove through to Stirling with my friend Fraser, who was bringing Erebor Reclaimed. Now, I had played maybe six practice games against Fraser in the run-up to this, and I don't think I won a single one. Uh, it turns out that a fully mounted army is no use against Defence 9 Dwarfs with crossbows. Um, that fully mounted army was walking most of the time. Once we got to the venue, Common Ground Games, we got registered, started chatting to some friends and awaited the draw for our first opponent. My first opponent of the day was Cameron from Paints on a 4-Up and he brought his Dunland army, so very thematic for Game 1, Rohan vs Dunland. We deployed via the Maelstrom rules, so we were all over the place, but in the back right hand corner there you can see AMR's warband, very very close to Goroth's warband. I won priority and immediately charged all of my units into that warband to try and tie up Goroth and uh, trap him if, if necessary. Now I threw a throne spear on my first turn and actually killed someone. I don't think that's ever happened before. I moved one of my riders up to the closest heirloom, dismounted him and rolled to take it. I needed a free and I got it, so the first heirloom of the day was mine. With the rest of my movement, I charged AMR, threw a throne spear, and miraculously killed someone else. So two throne spear kills in the first turn never happened before. Um, I know you can't see the dice rolls, but I may have to invest in a taller tripod. On my opponent's turn, he managed to claim an heirloom before surrounding AMR and his warband. The shooting phase passed without incident, so we're straight into the combat phase. It was Aemir against Goroth and four warriors. With the help of a point of might, Aemir won the duel and somehow managed to kill all four warriors, pulling his total for kills up to five in turn one, which is more than he's got in most games. With my Riders of Rohan on the charge, I managed to get another couple of kills, and that was the end of turn 1. At the beginning of turn 2, I won priority, which is pretty much unnecessary for Rohan armies. If you're not charging, you're not winning. Unfortunately, my opponent called a heroic move with Goroth. I attempted to counter, 
with Amer and lost the roll off, so Amer was quickly surrounded and had no charge bonus. I handed off my heirloom to a mounted rider of Rohan to give him some extra escapability and move the rest of my movement. My opponent then claimed a second heirloom, so things were starting to look a little bit bad for me. There was no shooting phase in this turn, we were all in combat or had moved our full amount, so it was straight into combat, and it was not a good round of combat. I lost two riders before Amer had to fight off Gorolf, a chieftain, two wildmen, and an Uruk, and I'm sure you can tell how that went. After losing my biggest hero and most of his warband, things went downhill pretty quickly for me. Uh, the entirety of my army got sort of stuck in a battle in the middle of the table, which is the place I didn't want to be because all of the heirlooms were around. Uh, whilst that was happening, my opponent managed to split some of his units off because he outnumbered me by at least two to one to go and pick up these heirlooms. Um, Looking back, like I said, I knew this was going to be the hardest one for me because I have low model count and cavalry cannot pick up the heirlooms by themselves. They have to dig them out on foot and then maybe pass them off to a cavalry. So, unfortunately, the game ended with a 7-0 victory to Cameron. Well deserved. He played a very, very good match. Game 2 saw me going up against Josh and his Fiefdom's army in a game of Destroy the Supplies. Now, I really like the Fiefdom's army, it's very thematic with each uh, hero giving their own unit different uh, perks and the army bonuses it gives them to all of the army. Um, I'm very tempted to maybe start a Fiefdom's army once I've finished many, many other projects I've got going on. Winning priority, I moved up the board hoping to outmaneuver his mostly infantry army, but worrying about those black root veil archers in the middle of the board that were pretty dangerous, especially against horses and heroes. Josh responded on his move by turtling up on his supplies to protect them. With those archers there, he didn't want to move, he wanted to sit back and wait for me to come to him. During the shooting phase I had nothing, uh, Josh fired 5 shots from his Black Root Veil archers straight into Theoden, costing me 2 points of might and a point of fate to come out unscathed. Going into round 2 I moved a couple of units into combat, used some throwing spears on the way which unfortunately caused 0 wounds. During the shooting phase, Josh unloaded his arrows on Theoden with a couple of in the ways, killing a royal guard's horse but doing no further damage than that. I then returned fire with throwing spears, which unsurprisingly did nothing. In the fight phase, Dernhelm had charged the Iron Hills captain, who was the mercenary captain, and won the duel, unfortunately only inflicting one wound despite getting eight dice against them. Going into round three I lost priority which is an absolute killer for Rohan. Um, you can't see it because it's hidden by trees but right up at the top there is Josh's Imrahil, that's his leader and he's on horse with a lance. I needed to charge him because if he charged me I'd be in serious trouble so I called a heroic move with Dernhelm and won the roll off to tie them up. During his movement, Josh charged his forlong into one of my royal guard, as well as a couple of archers. Uh, he then proceeded to turtle up even more around one of the objectives with his knights and spearmen. In my movement phase, I managed to charge Aomer and most of his warband into combat, hoping to take the supplies hidden underneath his units. I left a couple of guys behind who couldn't quite get into combat, just far enough that they could charge in the next turn. I also took Thaden and ran him as far away from trouble as possible. He, bear in mind he's only got uh, one point of might, zero points of fate and three will and two wins at this point. Uh, he was barely holding on. 
The shooting phase passed without incident and it was on to the fight phase. I called the heroic combat of Aemir, hoping that he could slingshot through as many troops as possible and clear up the supplies for someone to come in and burn on the next turn. There are a couple of the fights that were unfortunately hidden by the trees. Once again, I, I will invest in a taller tripod. I lost a couple of riders who had been charged, proving that Rohan really need to have that charge bonus to be any good. Through the rest of the fight phase, one of my royal guard killed two of his archers before Aomer killed the units he heroic combated into. The last fight of the round, which unfortunately again was hidden behind the bushes, was Dernhelm versus the Iron Hill's captain and Imrahil. We both struck up to fight value 9, then I lost the duel. Fortunately, Dernhelm survived completely unwounded. At the start of the next turn, I once again lost priority, which is just a killer for Rohan or any um, all cavalry army I assume, but especially for Rohan. Um, I had to call a heroic move of Aemir to allow him and his warband to charge the units that were on the supplies and hopefully try and burn them at the end of this round. We also saw a rare throwing spear kill as well. With Josh's turn, he then started to advance up the board himself, getting closer and closer to my supplies. He charged his mercenary captain, the Iron Hill's captain, as well as Prince Emrahil, into Dernhelm, hoping to finish her off this turn, then charged Forlorn the Fat into my Urukai Shaman right in the middle of the board. In response, I pulled back Theoden, hoping to hold him up just long enough for numbers to support me. Skipping over the shooting phase because nothing happened, into the fight phase, Joshua called the heroic combat with either Imra Hill or the Iron Hills Captain, I can't remember. They're both in combat with Dernhelm along with a couple of his warriors. Once again, unfortunately, you can't see it because it's behind the tree. What's happening out there? Shall I describe it to you? Or would you like me to find you a box? <laughs> Against all odds, Dernhelm drew the fight and won the roll off. What the hell? Knowing that this game might come down to leader wounds, I took all three strikes against Imrahil and unfortunately did one wound which was recovered with fate. In Forlong's fight, he managed to kill the three Urukai, but not the Shaman. He only had three attacks, so that was the best he could hope for. At the end of the fight phase, Aemir and his warband had cleared all of the enemies off of that hill and burned the first supplies of the game. Going into the next round, I unfortunately lost priority again, which was proven to be a, a real problem for me, not just in this game, but for the whole tournament in general. He got for long on one of the objectives, but luckily they didn't have enough movement to get on him, which would prevent them from burning it in this turn, and he was able to move another knight a little bit closer to the objective at the back as well. Into the fight phase, and Dernhelm's luck finally deserted her. Trapped between Imrahil, an Iron Hill captain, and two warriors, there were just too many dice, and she was gone. I had managed to get a cheeky transfix on Forlong, hoping to prevent him from burning the supplies and hoping even that Theoden could maybe kill him and prevent any further damage. Unfortunately, Theoden couldn't wound him. Going into the next turn, I actually won priority. Unfortunately, by this point it was too little too late and Josh still had a point of might on Imrahil, which he used to call a heroic move and charge Theoden. This kept Forlong on the objective, meaning that he was guaranteed to keep it at the end of the turn. Now this would be the last turn, and it's also where my camera died, because I forgot to plug it into the battery pack. So let me talk you through John Maddenstale, what happened in this turn. Uh, right here, Imrahil killed Theoden, allowing Forlong to take this objective, which you can just about see here, um, guaranteeing those extra points. This knight here, um, dismounted his horse and got onto the objective here, getting even more points, um, not to mention the leader kill that uh, Josh got here. 
over here I charged in some riders as well as Amy and his boys hoping that a, a thrown spear would take someone out from the supplies that they're all hiding on and then I could maybe claim on it unfortunately wasn't going to happen these guys stayed resolute and I was unable to claim any points from this objective here leading to a victory for Josh now I know what some of you are thinking Rab, where's the drama? where's the gossip? you promised us something was going to go seriously wrong in this video your thumbnail said it your title said it you even made some hints about it at the beginning of the video don't worry it's coming but we'll get on to all of that later for now it was lunchtime. got a chance to eat some pizza chill out put my feet up for a little bit and chat to some of my mates. There's also a good opportunity to look at all of the minis that were up for best painted and there were some incredible models there. So much so in fact that I didn't even bother putting mine in. M mostly because my game ran late but as soon as I saw the display board I thought don't bother. Now on to game 3 and I was playing Johnny in a game of Fog of War. Now for Fog of War you choose one hero on the opposite team, not the leader, to kill one hero on your side, not the leader, to protect and a piece of terrain on the opponent's half of the field in which to take and you take that if you have more models than them on it so I chose uh, Johnny's Urukai Shaman who I think was around about here somewhere I chose to protect my Urukai Shaman because we actually had the exact same Mercy's Warbad he was uh, around about this somewhere behind all the trees and I chose to try and take this large piece of scenery in the middle which had some stairs up the back here and going up to the top um, unfortunately Johnny then put all of his crossbowmen right here on top of it uh, allowing him to rain shots down upon the whole army do you remember at the beginning of the video how I said I played Fraser six times with his Iron Hills uh, heavy duty high defence crossbow dwarves well Johnny was running pretty much the same army, except he was using Dane instead of Thorin, so it was even stronger. Skipping ahead a couple of turns of uneventful movement and shooting, we eventually started to clash our battle lines. Uh, Johnny wasn't moving as far as me, obviously I was cavalry and he was dwarf, so he was at a distinct advantage when it came to maneuverability. However, up at the top of the screen he had a couple of goat riders who were quite handy and had actually managed to get a charge on one of my Rohan Royal Guard. During the shooting phase, Johnny killed one of my riders with a barrage of crossbow bolts. I don't like crossbows. The fight phase then saw me lose two of my three Rohan Royal Guard to some goat riders. And then came the big fight of the round, Dane vs Aemir. Dane won the fight before inflicting three wounds upon Aemir. I had to use all three points of fate and two points of might to keep Aemir alive on one point of might and one wound. Going into the next round I unsurprisingly at this point lost priority however I was able to call a heroic move with Theoden who was close enough to affect Aemir as well. Uh, Johnny attempted to master a battle at using Dane but couldn't get a 5 plus so I was able to charge a lot of riders into Dane. Behind that tree and building, the Urukai Shaman that I was trying to protect was surrounded by a Goat Rider captain and a couple of riders. And before you say it, yes, I know, I know, I'm looking for one right now, okay? What an email. In the shooting phase, Johnny killed my last Royal Guard. I think that was two with crossbows and one. In combat, I returned fire with three of my Rohan riders and actually killed someone with a bow, which may have been the only bow kill of the day. Into the fight phase, I had called a heroic combat with Dernhelm, which I won and then used the slingshot into the Urukai Shaman, who was my target. In round two of the big fight, Aemir vs Dane, Aemir actually won the fight but was unable to inflict any wounds upon Dane. In her second combat of the turn, Dernhelm managed to kill both the 
the Urukai Warriors, giving her a clear line straight to the Shaman in the next turn. At the start of the next turn, I managed to get a charge in on Dane with uh, Amir and a couple of riders, hoping to keep him trapped long enough to actually do some damage to him. Dernhelm had also charged the Urukai Shaman, who was the target for the match, and in the ensuing fight phase, killed him outright. Despite being outnumbered by Aemir and two riders of Rohan, Dane managed to win the fight, but, luckily for me, was unable to inflict any wounds. At the start of the next phase, Johnny won priority and managed to charge most of my troops. However, he couldn't reach Dernhelm, who sneaked under an archway and up the stairs to start to claim the piece of terrain for myself. In the fight phase, I called a heroic combat with Dernhelm, who killed the unit on the stairs they were fighting before making their way up the stairs into another combat with another unit and killing them as well. Honestly, over the course of the tournament, Dernhelm was my MVP. However, her brother Aemir would not be so lucky. After a tense back and forth over a few rounds, Dane finally slew, slew, slayed, slayed, slew, killed Aemir and took him off the board. At this point I was broken and I was just waiting for the game to end, but unfortunately it wouldn't. It just kept rolling on and I lost more and more troops, including Thaden, and before I knew it, I was down to one model left. Dernhelm. With my soul warrior Dernhelm holding the piece of terrain that I needed to claim victory points, it was looking grim. Dane was coming up the stairs after her and I thought this could be it. However, miraculously, the game ended on a roll of a 2. I thought, what a shame, i done really well but I'm not going to claim any points for this game whatsoever. However, what I failed to account for Dernhelm has two models, Eowyn and Merry, so technically I outnumbered the lone Dane on the objective and would score some points after all. Now it's time to count up the victory points. We'd both killed our targets, we'd both failed to protect our VIPs and we'd both taken each other's terrain piece. However, I had none on the terrain piece that Johnny was trying to take, so he scored full points. It was going to be a very narrow victory for him. Or was it? So here's where the video gets spicy, and I know you've all been waiting for it. Here's the tea. Once the game was finished, we put our scores into long jacks and went our separate ways. I went to talk to some friends who are still playing and discuss my narrow loss and how... Terrible I've been doing over the course of the day. I was telling them about my last turn and how I realised actually Dernhelm was two models so I would score some victory points and I thought for a second I might draw this game. They all looked at me like I was an idiot. What do you mean you would you would get some points for terrain for having models on it? I was like, well, Dernhelm's two models, right? I thought, oh my god, have I cheated Johnny? Is Dernhelm not actually two models? Does a passenger not count as a model? Does Mary, in this instance, a passenger not count as a model? Should I have scored zero victory points for that terrain piece? They looked at me like I was even stupider than before. Why were you counting victory points for scoring a terrain piece, Rab? I was quite taken aback. I realised that now more and more people were staring at me. Wasn't that the point of the game? Wasn't it kill one of their models? one of their heroes, protect one of your heroes and take a terrain piece. More shocked looks and open mouths. Friend Hamish broke the silence. What game were you playing, Rob? I looked around to realise that there was at least six people now looking at me. Fog of War? Turns out nobody else was. The scenario for the game was not Fog of War. It was Lords of Battle. I don't know how we managed to do it. I look back at the footage to see did I tell Johnny it was Fog of War? Did he tell me it was Fog of War? Did someone in passing tell us? But I didn't have it on camera. So we had played the wrong game. I had to go and tell the TO Alan 
and I thought he was going to choke me out in the middle of the tournament. Uh, he was stressed enough as it is, running about mad uh, at, like I said, the biggest singles event, one day singles event in GBHL history and he was me telling him that Johnny and me just played the wrong game. Luckily I managed to get over to Johnny, explain to him what happened, we had a good laugh about it and we re-scored it as if we were playing Lords of Battle which is quite easy because I only had one or two depending on how you look at it models left on the table and Johnny had just reached his breaking point so he knew how many wins that would have taken but yeah second ever event made a complete arse of myself anyway on to game 4 the last game of the day was against Reese and his big pink mimic once again, for the second time today, I was playing Fog of War. So the terrain piece I wanted to take was this little farm up here. The hero I wanted to kill was the Elf Captain Mercenary, um, just hiding behind that fence. And I wanted to protect, once again, my uruk Shaman, since I did such a great job of protecting him in the last game. I had never played a Mulek before, but my plan was to tie them up in combat and then using my other units, since I actually outnumbered someone for a change, go off and pick up my objectives, try and kill that elf captain, try and take that terrain piece, and try and decide which one of my terrain pieces he was going for, and maybe lean some extra units that way. I decided to sit back and let Reese come to me. Then I'll be able to pepper his mimic with bow shots and maybe even throwing spears, depending how close he gets. It worked in the movies, right? As the movement drew closer, I started taking shots at my Urukai Shaman from the Howda, dealing two wounds, which luckily I managed to fate one of them, leaving my Shaman on one wound. Into the combat phase, and I called a heroic combat with Dernhelm and her party around her, hoping that the four on one they had against the Lone Rider would be enough to see them through and they could then use that extra movement from the combat to push at least one model into the Mimic and hold them up for a turn to get me around the board. I then did the exact same thing on the other side of the Mimic, just behind that tree, AMR called a heroic combat, one slingshot himself into the Mimic. In the fate phase it was AMR, Dernhelm and a single lone rider against the Mimic. I won the duel, but was unfortunately only able to inflict one wound upon the Mimic. Now, unfortunately I was not aware of the Stampede rule that says that when a Mimic takes a wound, it has to pass a Courage test, and if it doesn't pass the Courage test, then I control it and can use it to trample or move it around, potentially even move it off the table and take it out of the game completely. Um, I was not aware of this because I'd never played a moment before and my opponent never mentioned it uh, during the game despite the fact that I put several wounds on the Mimic. Could this have changed the outcome of the game? Possibly. Am I upset? No. It's just a bit of fun at the end of the day and I don't think there was any malicious intent behind it. Unfortunately, my tactics of slowing the Mimic down weren't helping me gain any ground in the actual objectives of the match. I was nowhere near my uh, terrain piece that I was trying to get to. Reese had actually gone to the terrain piece that I assumed he was going for and his uh, hero that I was trying to kill, the elf captain, was sitting pretty not doing a thing. So I started peeling some models off and moving them towards their objectives. Turns out this didn't really work very well. Um, normally I get too tied up in the combat side of things and I forget about objectives but it seems in this one when I actually tried to play the objectives I lost. Uh, the Mimic um, took one movement and wiped out about four of my guys. Unfortunately with my low model count and splitting my forces up instead of just going straight for the Mimic it wasn't long until I was broken. Since I was broken at the end of each turn we would start rolling a dice on a 1 or a 2 the game would end and unlike the last time I played where it dragged on and on and on the game ended at the first time of asking. This was a sore loss, um, the worst of the day by far, I can't help but wonder what would have happened if I'd just stuck to my original plan of killing the Mimic or if I'd read up the rules a bit and I knew about the stampede rule. 
That was the tour over, it was time to sit back and watch the winners collect their medals. I had missed out on the wooden spoon by two places, that went to Gary Chadband. Friend of the channel, Jamie Moore, picked up third place prize, well deserved of course Jamie. Chris Cousins took second place. Top spot went to Ross Marshall, accompanied here by Fraser, another friend of the channel and the guy that drove me to and from Stirling. Fraser provided the winning mercenaries that allowed Ross to win the tournament. Incidentally, I had Ross's mercenaries. Didn't work for me. And best painted went to Alex Bordas for his Bolg and the rest of his models, but that Bolg especially. It's actually featured on the channel twice now because he won best painted at the Geek Retreat event as well. And most sporting went to Johnny, who we played in game 3. Uh, most likely won it for putting up with my shit during the game and the nonsense that followed afterwards. I voted for him and I'm assuming everyone else did as well. All in all, just a fantastic event. Brilliantly run. Um, great fun. No drama, apart from my stupidity. Um, huge shout out to Alan Liddell for running the event and answering any questions on the day. And genuinely, she's been a huge help to new players such as myself. Uh, I'll certainly look forward to the next one. As for me, it was time to chill. Hope you all enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you all next time.